Well, uh, good morning there, Christ Fellowship, and whoever else might be watching. Uh, for the next few days, I want to go through really my favorite theological topic, which is eternal rewards, the believer's rewards that we are given in heaven. In fact, I did my um, uh, dissertation on this, which has been turned into the book, The Preacher's Payday. And uh, I'm not going to go through the whole book with you, but I'm going to highlight just a few verses uh, today just to, to get our mind around the concept that not everybody is equal in heaven. I know that some people think, well, once you get to heaven, I'm, I'm just glad to be there. But there is a, a reality in Scripture, it's very clear in the New Testament, that the more you do for the kingdom in this life, the, well, shall we say, the more faithful you are with what God has given you to do in this life, uh, the more or at least different your um, position of authority or uh, role of responsibility is in heaven. That might sound like a, a little bit of a foreign concept to you. So what I wanted to, to do today is just mention a few of the verses just so that you're thinking about it. And then in the days to come, we'll look at some of them in a little bit more detail and some others. Um, firstly, we all realize that different Christians uh, produce a different level of fruitfulness in this life, right? I mean, not everybody um, obeys all of God's commandments uh, equally, and some people take the Christian life far more seriously than others. Some are spiritual couch potatoes who may be believers but kind of do the bare minimum. You know, they might go to church, they might give some, they might serve some. And then you get other people that love everything about the church and are serving with everything that they have and as much time as they can and investing their talents. Some people give up their careers, uh, give up uh, their personal health or, or families or whatever it might be in order to go on the mission field and live in a dangerous place. Some people give their lives for the gospel. And the, the scriptures are clear that not everybody, therefore, will have the same reward. But there will be different rewards based on how faithful you are with what God has given you to do. You think of the parable of the, the soils, for example, in Mark chapter 4 and verse 8, uh, where Jesus says that the, the different, um, even, even the, the seed that was planted in the good soil produced some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. So there is an acknowledgement that some Christians just produce more fruit. They, they just take it more seriously. They just do more for the Lord. And there are a couple of passages where you see Jesus acknowledge this. So, for example, um, at one point, Peter comes to Jesus. This is in um, Matthew chapter 19. And uh, Jesus has just spoken about how difficult it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. And... Um, that it is impossible with man, but all things are possible with God. And then Peter says something. Obviously, this, this conversation about how rich people are actually at a disadvantage to be saved. Peter realizes, well, I, we've all given up quite a lot to follow you. Um, do you want to talk about that? And so Peter says in Matthew 19, verse 27, um, See, We've left everything and followed you. What then will we have? And then Jesus doesn't say, well, isn't following me enough? Or, well, you'll have heaven just like everybody else. No, Jesus says, well, truly I say to you in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be lost and the lost first. So here Jesus is saying, look, Peter, you're going to get reward in heaven and you're going to get a lot of reward in heaven because you've given up so much. And in fact, everybody who gives up for my name's sake, for being a Christian, for following Christ, will receive a reward over and above one's salvation inheriting eternal life. 
you see other hints of this as well, where James and John's mother comes to Jesus. This is in the next chapter, Matthew chapter 20, and asks a special favor that her sons, James and John, will be seated at Christ's left and right hand in the kingdom. And Jesus doesn't say, no, 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 uh, everybody's equal in, in heaven. He says, no, those positions do exist, but they're not for your sons. They are for whom my father has uh, prepared them. Verse 23, chapter 20, verse 23 of Matthew. Um, it is for those whom it has been prepared by my father. And so there, there are these positions of authority in heaven and, and of honor. Um, James chapter 3, verse 1 James says, let not many of you become teachers, my brothers, because we will incur a stricter judgment. So those that have been entrusted with teaching the word of God actually have a, a stricter judgment involved as well. Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 6 that the reason you shouldn't pray for other people to hear you or give for other people to praise you is because then you will lose your reward. It's not that you'll lose your salvation, but you're not getting any eternal reward for doing those things here on earth. And then, of course, there's the passages um, in Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, um, in Luke 19, the parable of the minas, where the, the master entrusts to his slaves um, different amounts, and then what they do with it, some do much with it, some do less with it, and then the rewards are given according to that. So there's many more passages. We're going to be looking at them over the next few days. But in the meantime, I, I want you to just meditate on that fact that uh, our God is so gracious that not only does he save us for free, um, but he also rewards us. He calls us to tasks. He gives us the ability to do those. He gives us the grace to do it. And then he even rewards us for it, sometimes in this life, but certainly in the next life as well. What a gracious God we have. And tune in tomorrow for more on eternal rewards.